Hey guys, Lady Lee here. I want to show you today how I blanch uh, potatoes for freezing. And you might think, you know, potatoes are a pretty good root crop that can last for a long time in storage. And, you know, why would you bother going through the process of blanching them and uh, freezing them? And that is a valid thought. But if you don't have the proper way to store potatoes after you harvest them or if you buy many of them and you don't have the right way to the right place to store them then they can get soft and kind of greeny uh, pretty quickly if you have a root cellar and if you have or if you can you know maybe you have a cold basement um, that stays around 40 45 degrees then that's that's you know right here is the best crop to store through the winter and um, a classic one really and there's so many things you can do with potatoes I don't have to tell you that they keep great and um, you can use them throughout the winter um, see, or you know since the moment you cure you harvest them and cured them until you use them they can stay just like that in the proper kind of storage I don't have a root cellar and I don't have a basement so, and during the summer, I harvest my potatoes, you know, about the middle of June or so. Through the summer, we're in and out the house all the time. So I don't even use my AC that much. I love to keep the doors open. I love the neighbors to stop by and know that they always welcomed. The kids are running around and it's just too warm inside the house to store the potatoes in the right way. Also, I'm a single mom to four amazing kids, nine and under. I run a homestead and a business. And let me confess that more than once, it was about maybe 10 minutes before dinner time, before the kids freak out and about to die from hunger, that I realized that there was nothing for me. <laughs> I didn't prepare anything for dinner. Um, especially during the growing season, I just get, you know, so busy with outside chores and, and, you know, taking care of the garden and all that, that cooking is not always on the top of my to-do list and I don't always remember. So having a bag of homemade, ready to go french fries it's like a lifesaver every time. Here's what I do. I cut them. I'll show you in a minute how I do the whole process. I cut them like this into french fries and I freeze them in one layer on a baking sheet. I'll show you how I do that too. And then I put them in a bag and I stick the bag in the freezer after, after they're already frozen. Now, when I need them, I just take them out. I don't need to wait for them to thaw or anything. I take my bag, I take the french fries out, I put them, the potatoes out, I put them on the baking sheet, spread them with a little bit of olive oil and preheat my oven to 450 degrees and stick them in probably 30 to 40 minutes and I have ready to go french fries. That is even healthy for you because it was baked in the oven and was just sprayed with olive oil. Once they come out, I can add garlic powder, um, black pepper, salt, whatever seasonings I like. And I have to admit that more often than not, you know, it might just be part of dinner, you know, just, and my kids never, never complain about that. They love homemade french fries in the oven. And you know, it's just a lifesaver really. Um, to have something that you can stick in the oven and be done with it in like 30 minutes Many times that was the only thing that was for dinner and you know, I was um, That that was it so you know, that's that's how it is when you have so many other things to do I do send the kids to grab a few tomatoes from the garden and then we have tomatoes and french fries I mean, that's an awesome dinner for a homesteader. Don't you think? Don't you think? I think so. Okay, so before we start, um, just seeing how we're doing this, let's talk about what is blanching. 
Blanching is really simple. All it is really is just cooking your vegetables in boiling water for three minutes before you freeze them. This three minutes in boiling water, what it does, it stops the enzymes that cause the loss of taste, the loss of color, and the loss of nutrients when we store them in the freezer, okay? Um, other than that, it also preserves the good stuff, the, all the nutrients and the good stuff that are in the vegetable well, for the whole time that it is in the freezer. So it helps us really preserve the vegetable fresh, as fresh as we can if we go in to freeze it. And you might ask yourself, can I skip that step and can I not do it and can I just freeze my stuff? A lot of vegetables, yes, you can do it. I do find with potatoes that they become brownish, you know, dark in color if you don't blanch them. But let's say with carrots or other things, you might be able to skip that step, but then I suggest that you use your frozen vegetables within a couple of months. If you are planning to freeze your vegetables for more than a couple of months, then go ahead and blanch them. Don't um, skip that step, and I think you'll be happy later. Okay, now you can use any kind of potatoes uh, for freezing. So you can freeze red potatoes, you can freeze um, Yukon gold potatoes. You probably know that every kind of potato is better for a different um, purpose in the kitchen. So if you freeze fingerling potatoes or red potatoes, they'll be better for mashed potatoes. If you freeze um, the Kinabic, I think that's how you, pronounce it, I'm not sure, or uh, Yukon Gold, they'll be better for french fries. Um, but you can pretty much do the same thing with every kind of potato. You want to make sure that you are freezing potatoes that has been have been cured um, and about a month old um, be, to get the best result, okay? So don't go and freeze your potatoes right when you harvest them from the garden, okay? You have to give them some time to cure and then um, maybe after a month or so, you can go ahead and freeze them. If you purchase potatoes at the grocery store, they're probably ready to go. So not younger than a month, but then very firm and fresh and, you know, a good, good potato to start with. The first thing that we're going to do is peel the potatoes. So I'm just going to use my vegetable peeler and just peel a few of them. I suggest that you don't go ahead and do a bazillion of potatoes at once. Just work in batches of, you know, five to ten potatoes maybe, depending on how big they are. And um, that makes it a little bit easier to manage. Okay, so I just simply peel my potatoes. You can, if you want, um, blanch them and freeze them with the skin on. Uh, just make sure you wash them pretty well uh, before you put them in the water. And I'll just go ahead and wash those after I'm done peeling them. Meanwhile, while I'm doing that, I have a pot of water heating up on the stove top. I want to bring it to a boil uh, and then just keep the water boiling until my, potato, my potatoes are ready. And I also set a bowl of cold water right next to the pot of hot water. So you can see here is my um, pot of hot water that is getting um, reaching boiling temperature in a minute and then my uh, cold water bowl that I will add ice to in a minute. So I'm gonna go and wash these potatoes and then we'll cut them like french fries. All right, so now I'm cutting them just like you would cut french fries. And if you cut many potatoes and you have many potatoes to work on, you can place those ready pieces in a bowl of cold water and it will keep them from turning brown and changing their color. Um, since I just have a few of them, I'll just go ahead and do this real quick and then we'll blanch them. Here we are, my water is boiling and I'm just going to grab my potatoes and put them 
inside of the boiling water. I just use my big spoon over here. The water will probably stop boiling and that's fine. Once all of my potatoes are in, I'm just going to uh, let them cook for three minutes. Kind of move them around a little bit a couple of times. All right, so just kind of move them around a little bit a couple of times. I also have a bowl with icy water and we're gonna move the potatoes after three minutes right from the hot water to the bowl of icy water and that will ensure that it stops the cooking so we can uh, keep our potatoes firm. We don't want them to soften too much. And then I also have a towel here, a kitchen towel. And from the cold water, I'll let them um, cool completely in the cold water for a few minutes and then I'll move them into the towel. So we'll just kind of move them around a little bit. Okay, just moving them around a little bit more, just a few more seconds. And after three minutes, I'm going to scoop all of the potatoes and add them to the bowl of ice cold water. Just like that. Make sure I get every one of them. And it's really amazing how this short processing can help preserve the vegetable for so much longer in the freezer. We don't need this anymore. Um, and now I'll just kind of let them cool all the way. Make sure they're completely cool before I move them onto the kitchen towel to dry. Okay, so the potatoes have been in the cold water for like three or four minutes. They are completely cold and I'll just grab them with my hands and put them on the kitchen towel and we will dry them before we put them in the freezer. Oh, it's cold. Okay, one more. All right. So, I'm just going to dry them. I might give them a few minutes to completely dry. Well, they won't be completely, completely dry, but this is just enough. Okay, and now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a baking sheet. And I'm gonna freeze them on a baking sheet first. What's going to happen if I just put all of them in the in a bag and put it in the freezer just like that? They're gonna become one big bowl of sticking to each other French fries pieces, and I don't want that. So what I need to do is just organize them, and that is my friends a great job for your kids you just organize them nicely one by one like that and i will put this sheet in the freezer now um you don't have to do just one layer of course i imagine you probably want to um, process more than five potatoes so what you can do is once this first layer is done you can put another piece of parchment paper on it 
and then do the second layer and I usually do four, five, you know, six layers like that. And then I wrap the whole thing with, um, with the uh, food plastic wrap, the clingy stuff. And then I put that in the freezer for, you know, 24 hours or so before I take it out and put the french fries in a bag. So you definitely can layer them up, just separate them with parchment paper so they don't stick, you know, to each other. Make sure they don't touch whatever french fries oh, touch each other. They're probably going to stick, but that's fine. Usually you can break them apart, but it's better if they just close together but don't really touch. Okay, so if I would have done another layer, I'll have to get another parchment paper, put it on top, and then do another layer of potatoes. And then I take it just like that and place it, cover it with a plastic wrap and put it in the freezer for about 24 hours to completely freeze. That is it guys, this is how you freeze potatoes, um, blanch potatoes and freeze them for french fries or whatever. You don't have to cut them like french fries, you can, you know, do whatever, whatever shapes you want. Just don't make the pieces too thick um, and, you know, after they are in the freezer for 24 hours on the baking sheet, you just pick them up put them in a bag, I close the bag and put a date on it and what it is because sometimes it's hard to um, figure out what's in bags in the freezer. And I put it in the freezer and it's ready to go for homemade oven baked french fries. I hope this video helped. Let me know in the comment below if you're doing it in the same way. This is how you blanch. You can blanch any kind of vegetable like that, like carrots or you know anything else that you might, leeks or anything else that you might wanna blanch. This is how you do it. It's a very simple process and I hope this video helped you kind of figure out how it's done. Please comment below, let me know if you do this the same way that I do it and subscribe and like this video so more people can see it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.